welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to make your own engine headers. Alright, so basically the first step is to buy a set of header flanges. Um, these can be bought in many different stores. Uh, I bought these ones uh, from uh, eBay. And the next uh, item that you will need is uh, a headers kit. Uh, this kit comes with a whole bunch of pre-bent uh, tubes, uh, as you can see in this picture, as well as two collectors. And these also can be bought in many stores, including uh, Summit Racing and Jigs, for example. For this particular engine, um, the flanges, the header flanges or the exhaust ports off the cylinder heads are actually oval. They're not perfectly circle, uh, but they are actually, um, they have the same circumference of a, as a two inch uh, tube in this particular case. So as you see, what I had to do uh, is basically try to squish the tube a little bit in order to make it fit. Uh, inside the uh, the uh, the flange and they fit really nicely as you can see in this picture here so after that is done i cut uh, little stubs approximately one uh, one and a half uh, inches long and then i stick them inside the flange as you can see and then i weld the inside and the outside uh, making uh, sure that uh, i leave enough room uh, for the header uh, bowl uh, flange bolts uh, so that's why I, there's some areas on the outside that I didn't uh, I didn't uh, well. So once that is complete, uh, I basically now um, make sure that any excess weld on the inside of the flange is all ground uh, smooth, and then I mount uh, the uh, uh, the flange as well as the stubs onto the cylinder head cylinder head. By the way, for this particular uh, headers build, I was using a MIG welder and I was using thin uh, 25 tau or 30 tau wire because it's a uh, fairly thin wall uh, material. So the next step in the build is basically to cut off the collector and uh, to the length that you want and to position it at the exact position that you want. And now you could use a few pieces of steel here and there or or a ratchet strap or anything just to position uh, the collector fixed in the exact spot that you want it in place. And uh, in, the, in case you're working on an engine that, are, that is on an engine stand, that's fairly easy, but sometimes it gets more difficult when you're working in a chassis. And this is an example here of how you can position the collector uh, where you want it exactly. And this is what's gonna help you to start the build uh, for the runners. So the best way to cut the uh, the header tubes is basically using a, a bandsaw. This has been by far the easiest way to do it. Uh, you gotta you have to make sure every time you do a cut to actually debur it because you don't want any raised edges on the inside because this will restrict restrict flow. So what happens now is you uh, you start uh, looking at the different combinations and you kind of think in your head what is the best way for me to run the header. Um, obviously, if you want the shortest length possible, or you, you might have other considerations to take into account. I normally start with the uh, most difficult tube first, so the one that is hidden the most, that is most towards the back. And what I do is uh, I kind of try to find a combination of bends and straight pieces in order to get from the uh, flange uh, all the way to the uh, uh, to the collector and I basically just just get the uh, the the runner tube to go into the collector I don't really care if it's sealed or not or, or not in this particular case so once I'm done uh, all four tubes on one side um, I take out um, I take out each tube uh, uh, obviously from the stub to the collector I take it out uh, weld it uh, in place grind it if I want to it's not necessary to grind it and make sure that there's no burrs inside and I just put it back and then I tack weld uh, the stubs uh, each runner tube I tack weld it to the stub and then finally I, I tack weld the four tubes in position together but I make sure that I do not tack weld the tubes to the collector so that's the last part this is an example here of the uh, four tubes finished uh, 
tack welded uh, to the stubs and tack welded together, uh, but uh, still not tack welded to the collector. Something important that I forgot to mention is uh, when you're uh, matching tubes together and fitting them, you have to make sure that there are no gaps, uh, minimal amount of gaps possible. And this could take you some time to do and it takes practice, but eventually uh, you, you'll get it. So uh, now that this is done, I basically take uh, uh, the flange and the runner tubes. I pull them out of the collector. As you can see, the collector is missing in this picture. I bring them to my welding bench and I make sure that I weld them uh, all together. It's important now when you're welding um, the, the inside uh, of, uh, of where the collector, where the tubes would go into the collector, make sure that there are no gaps, obviously, in this, in this case. So uh, you want to you wanna weld them uh, fully. And as you can see here, there's the sticky, uh, point, uh, the pointy part that I add. And this is, um, you don't have to do it. This is an optional uh, uh, item if you want it's basically like a inverse cone uh, that i made out of four pieces of uh, of uh, two balls and i i just glue it kind of glue it i mean weld it together and um, as you can see here this kind of facilitates the flow of the four tubes into the collector this is a, a good example here um, as you can see a full of four of them uh, welded together uh, just so you have to be 100 percent sure that they are uh, no gaps uh, in between. As you can see here, I kind of try to weld on the inside. And uh, finally, I just put it back uh, onto its original position where the collector would be and tack weld it and, uh, and uh, tack weld the collector onto the header, take it out and then weld it fully. Uh, as you can see in this uh, picture. So this is pretty much uh, completed here. This is a picture of the headers uh, finished and installed in the chassis, ready to finish the rest of the exhaust. Um, it could be a little bit more difficult in the chassis. It's much easier to have this done in the um, on an engine stand, as you can see here, but it obviously depends on what situation you are in. Um, most of the people use the headers kit because they have clearance issues. So finally, um, you could uh, use ceramic coating. Uh, you could spray the headers with the ceramic paint and you have to bake them afterwards. And this is how they look like when they're uh, completely finished. Honestly, um, I, I wouldn't do it again uh, with the ceramic coating. Um, the first time I did the headers, I coated them as you can see in this picture. But then after the next time I did it, I, I didn't coat them at all. I left them as they are and after, for five years, they still haven't uh, rusted. So, uh, because the header kit is basically uses aluminized uh, tube, so it doesn't rust. All right, well, that's all uh, for this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, thank you uh, for watching and make sure to comment and subscribe and like this video. Thank you till next time.